Barefoot Pamper Chef. So um, I just got a response. Um, someone asked me how to make the crock pot bread and see if it works. So I'm not going to have a finished product to show you, but I'll show you how to make it based on the recipe that's going around Facebook. So we'll see how it turns out. I'll post later uh, with a picture of what it looks like and, and how it turned out. So for my setup here, I've got my KitchenAid mixer with my dough hook on it. Uh, you can use this, you can do it by hand. It might just take a little bit longer. I just happen to have a KitchenAid because I make a lot of bread anyway. I've got my crock pot, it's set to high, and I've actually got inside of it uh, parchment paper that I'm gonna line it with. Uh, I'm gonna put my dough inside the parchment paper. So the very first thing that you wanna do with your bread is you wanna make sure that your yeast is alive. So yeast is a live, living thing. Be kind to your yeast. Your yeast does not like to be too cold. It doesn't like to be too hot. It's living, living. You need to keep it living. If it dies, it does not make bread. And I can smell my yeast right now because it smells so good. It's alive. All right, so what we're gonna do first in this container that's been sitting for about five minutes now, I have a half of a cup of lukewarm water. If you don't know what lukewarm is, if you feel it on your hands and it feels like your body temperature around 113 or less, that is lukewarm. You don't want it cold, you don't want it hot. Hot water is gonna kill your yeast. Don't kill your yeast. Half of a cup of lukewarm water one to three tablespoons of sugar. So if you want really, really sweet bread, use your three tablespoons. If you want more of a sandwich style bread, use one tablespoon. I don't use sugar, I use honey. So you can use one tablespoon of honey, which is what I did. <clears throat> and then you're gonna put in three tablespoons of active dry yeast. So, I buy my yeast in bulk, so this is active dry yeast. I store it lovingly in my pantry and it keeps kind of out of sight. It's not too hot, not too cold. Again, living product here. And I put that in with the lukewarm water and the sugar or the honey. So what that does is it causes the yeast to wake up. So after five minutes, if you don't have this nice, frothy based consistency to your bowl, then your yeast is not alive and you need to get new, new yeast. So that's been sitting, like I said, for about five or 10 minutes here. And we're gonna get started with what we're doing. So this particular recipe calls for two cups of milk and two tablespoons of butter that have been warmed up in the microwave. I put it on for 30 seconds just because I don't want it too warm because <clears throat> we're using yeast and we don't want to kill it until the bread is baked. So, let me check here. I'm gonna put it in for another 30 seconds just because my butter hasn't melted yet. So I put it in the microwave, two cups of water, and, or two cups of milk and two tablespoons of butter. With that, I don't have a lot of uh, milk left over right now, so I'm using almond milk. Uh, you can use whatever kind of milk you want. Uh, so yeah, hold on a minute. I got something, a little suggestion. Yeast does need sugar. Hold on, I'm gonna read that. I'll be right back. Because this is from an amazing baker. It does need sugar, or as you're using honey to feed off of, so don't skip the sweetener. Yes, obviously, yes. You need something sweet to feed the yeast. So I use honey, so it's sweet. It has kind of a, a carb in it, uh, sugar. You need something sweet. You cannot so skip that sweetener part. Uh, it's not going to change the flavor of your bread. It's going to change the fact that your yeast won't wake up. It needs sugar, just like us. 
you know, on this quarantine, you need sugar. All right, let's see if this milk and butter has melted. It has not. So we're gonna give that one minute and then I'll just have to let it cool a little bit before we do this yeast thing. So my yeast is nice and frothy and bubbly and it's eaten that sugar from that honey and it's got all of the nice water that it's kind of soaking up and frothing up there. So I'm gonna pour that into my bowl here. The next couple of things that we're gonna get ready, this particular recipe calls for either six cups of whole wheat flour or three cups of whole wheat flour and three cups of regular flour. So I looked in my pantry, I only had three cups of whole wheat flour left, so I'm doing the 50-50 blend. When you measure flour, do not do this and scrape it up along the side. You are not going to get an appropriate amount of flour. When you scoop your flour, take a spoon Scoop it up gently, pour it into your cup like this. So you're not packing it in, this is not brown sugar. And then sweep off the top. That is a cup of flour. It may take a little bit longer, but that's the real way to do it, and you're not going to overdo the amount of flour that you have. The best thing to do also is sift your flour. Uh, I've already sifted this, so I have a little sifter, and uh, this is my 50-50 flour mixture. The next thing that this calls for is we're going to do um, a one teaspoon of baking powder. Let me find my teaspoon. I set this up really quick. So we're gonna do one teaspoon of baking powder. And we're gonna do two teaspoons of salt. Now, like I said before, I use my salt that has already been uh, flavored. So there's one. And there's two. The reason I'm using this thing is because, like I said, I already had three cups of my wheat flour in there. I just threw in three cups of my sifted white flour. Let's see if this is done. Yeah, that's done. Okay. So the thing is right now, okay, this is lukewarm, so that's fine. If you put it in the microwave, and it comes out and it's hot, you wanna let it sit or you're gonna kill your yeast. So mine's lukewarm, it doesn't burn meat, it won't burn the yeast. So I'm gonna slowly pour this in so it cools a little bit more and add that to my yeast. Okay, now I'm gonna snap this into place and I'm gonna slowly add my flour while I'm feeding this. This might not be the easiest thing to use for my flour. I'll let that mix up for a second here. You may have to use your paddle first uh, before you use your dough hook. Uh, sometimes that brings the mixture together a little bit better there. down your sides. If you're doing this by hand, obviously just add things slowly until they're incorporated. Woo! Make a mess. It's not making bread unless you have flour all over yourself. So this is starting to come together a little bit. You don't want to add it all at one time because you want to make sure 
that it comes together as more of a dough. If it's too dry, um, you, you don't really want to have to add liquid. So you want to let it mix first and then add more if you have to. You can always add a little bit more flour if you need to. You can't take it out. So this is actually kind of starting to come together as a, a little bit of a, a ball. I'm going to let you guys see this in a second. I'm probably going to end up having to mix this, knead this by hand just for a few minutes. I don't know if I need any more flour or not. We'll add a little bit more. Still a little sticky. So I didn't use all of my flour. Uh, and then sometimes the environmental humidity, uh, bread making has a lot of different variables that uh, you need to watch out for. Uh, if you're in a mountainous region, your uh, air quality, uh, based on how far you are away from uh, uh, sea level, that would have an issue too with it. But this is coming together pretty nicely. I'll show you here in a second. All right. So I'm going to turn this off because I'm going to need this a little bit more by hand. Eh, it's a little sticky, so I'm going to add just a little bit more flour to that. And you don't want to over knead this or you'll get a pretty tough, tough loaf of bread. But the kneading is what uh, binds your glutens together and it uh, brings out the texture of the bread. That's looking better. That's probably about as much flour as I needed there. You can hear the change in the mixer. It's struggling a little bit more. So I'm going to do the rest of this by hand. So you see how that sticks to my dough hook there? And it's still a little bit warm. I may actually need a little bit more flour here. But there's some still at the bottom. So I'm just gonna turn this over a couple of times just to coat it with flour in my hand. Move this out of the way. Usually I have a bigger area to work with, uh, but I wanted to show you guys how to do this. So I'm going to work right here, throw down a little bit of flour, coat your hands with it. Obviously in this day and age, we've all washed our hands 9 million times by this point in the day. All right. So I'm hoping that you guys can see this. I know on video you can. I don't think you guys can see it over here as well. I'm going to try to move this a little bit, but it's hot. Okay. So you guys can see it now. Kneading. So I have a ball. I want to push away from me and fold it over and then I'm going to turn it halfway or a quarter of a way fold it over push it away from me turn fold it over push it away from me turn and you can see it's starting to come together more and I'm being very lovingly with my dough although you can take your frustrations out on this. So I'm turning a quarter of a turn, folding it back towards me and pushing it all out. And it'll start coming together in a nice looking kind of ball of dough here. And some people are a lot faster than others. I tend to get a little bit of my frustration out with it. It depends on who I'm ticked off at that day. You could probably need this for a couple of minutes, um, probably less than five. It says five to seven in there, but it's kind of a tough dough with the whole wheat flour as it is. Uh, sometimes if you knead it enough, you can actually kind of stretch out those glutens and make it a little bit better. So you can see how it's getting a little bit harder for me and it's coming right to where I want it to be. So if you flip this over, if I put in my fingers 
It's not exactly sticky and it pops right back up to meet me, which is where I want it. And of course, this is kind of just, this isn't like a, you know, a, a bread that I'd be making in the oven. This is a little bit different. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to take this loaf. Now, if I was making this in the oven, I would leave it to sit for an hour, let it proof uh, in a warm area with like a tea cloth over it. Um, and I would pour some uh, uh, olive oil on it to let it sit and rise without drying out for about an hour. And then I would knead it again and do that again. With this, we're actually using the heat from the high setting on your uh, crock pot to do the proofing for you. So it's only a knead one time bread. So we're gonna put this in here and make sure that my parchment paper is up along the sides. And let that sit in there. So here's that for you guys. You guys can see that. We're gonna pop our lid on. And we're going to let that sit for two and a half hours on high. And hopefully by the end of that two and a half hours on high, we will have homemade bread. Now the recipe does suggest that towards the end you start checking it every seven to ten minutes just to see it should be a nice golden brown on the bottom. And the top should be kind of a spongy bread consistency where it returns to your fingers. Uh, if you need to or if you want extra crust on it, when it's done in the crock pot, you can throw it underneath the broiler for a few minutes just to get that hard crust on there. Uh, if you did that at that point, I would probably put some olive oil on the top, maybe put whatever seasonings you want on top of the bread and uh, go from there. So hopefully you guys can now make bread at home and we won't be running around trying to get bread from everybody. Uh, so the whole recipe, I'll go through it again for the people who just came in, but I'm going to post this on YouTube later today so you can find it. It's Barefoot Pampered Chef uh, at the YouTube site. So we're going to take a half of a cup of lukewarm water. Now remember what I said, that water can't be too hot, can't be too cold. So uh, you want the living yeast to kind of have a nice little soak in a tub, but not like a hot tub. Uh, so half of a cup of lukewarm water, three tablespoons of active dry yeast, and one to three tablespoons of some sort of a sweetener. So I used a tablespoon of honey. I want my bread to be a little less sweet. You can use three tablespoons of a sweetener to make it more of a sweet bread. The yeast is going to eat the sugar and produce the gases that we need to make the bread rise. So the yeast is a living organism. We want to treat it as a living organism. Once that is set in a bowl, we're going to let it set for about five minutes. And you want to see that nice frothy consistency, nice frothy brown consistency to your yeast. If you don't see that frothy brown consistency to your yeast after five minutes, it's dead. You need new yeast. Sorry. So one, when that's kind of setting there, you want to pop two cups of milk and two tablespoons of butter into the microwave for about a minute and a half. But if you make it hot, you want to cool it down before you add it to your yeast. Or again, you're going to kill your yeast before it has a chance to make those nice gases that make all your little bubbly pockets in your bread. When that is all set, we're going to add it all to the bowl. So add the yeast mixture and the milk mixture to the bowl. And then we're going to beat in or uh, use your dough hook and incorporate six cups of whole wheat flour. In my case, I use three cups of whole wheat and three cups of white. If all you have is white, that's fine, but I would suggest going a cup at a time until you get to the consistency that you want. You may actually need more cups of white than you do wheat. Wheat is a little bit sturdier and it's gonna take a little bit less wheat. To that flour that you've hopefully sifted because it gets all the lumps out, you're going to add two teaspoons of salt. Now, if you used a salted butter like I did, you can use a little bit less salt. Uh, I kind of like my bread to have a little salty flavor to it, so the salted butter and the two teaspoons of salt should be just fine. And one teaspoon of baking powder. Baking powder, not baking soda. They're completely different things. 
So you wanna use baking powder. We're gonna knead that together with our dough hook or our hands. Uh, hands are great, kids can do this as well. Have them knead it in the bowl until it becomes a, more of a non-sticky mixture. And then you're gonna put that out onto a floured tabletop or a floured cutting board or even a floured cookie sheet if you don't want the kids to make a mess. And you're gonna knead that like I showed you, pull over, push, turn a quarter. Pull over, push, turn a quarter. And we're gonna knead that for about five minutes until that becomes a nice loaf that when you press into it, it rebounds back up at you. We're gonna put that loaf into a crock pot that is set on high, lined with parchment paper, and we're gonna let that cook for two and a half hours. And you'll have bread. Hopefully you guys can make this at home. Uh, I'll try to post pictures on my Facebook page of the bread after it's done and maybe I'll do a short video of the bread when it's done. If you guys have anything else that you need me to uh, demonstrate, let me know. Again, it's the Barefoot Pampered Chef on YouTube, so there's tons of videos there. And uh, you can share this with everybody you want. The other thing is, uh, if anybody has sort of a, a chopped challenge for me, as long as I have the ingredients at home, I'm sure I could probably figure it out. So, you know, say you have four different ingredients in your pantry and that's all you have and you want to know how to make a meal, send me those ingredients and I will try to figure out a meal for you. All right. Bye guys. Happy quarantine.